Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Don't you just hate it? Every time you switch on the TV, scroll through Facebook, or read a newspaper, it's Muslims have done this and Muslims have done that, they're barbaric, this religion is dangerous, etc., etc., etc. The saddest thing is that so many people out there believe it. It's people like you and I who need to dismantle these misconceptions by showing how beautiful Islam is. If it wasn't for such amazing dawah organizations out there, many people wouldn't be Muslim today. One such amazing organization is the Islamic Diversity Center. For over 17 years now, they've been building bridges within communities and calling people towards Islam through education, awareness, engagement and empowerment. Their amazing work has resulted in hundreds of people accepting Islam and thousands more understanding that Islam is not about killing and murder. Rather, it is a peaceful religion full of understanding, harmony and worship. In order to continue guiding the masses, they urgently need to raise £50,000. That's just 500 people donating £100 each. Now, as Muslims, if we can't sacrifice our time and resources to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then at least we should sacrifice a tiny percentage of our wealth which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Please donate £100 today and earn sadaqa jariyah on your scale of good deeds from now until the end of the Day of Judgment where your only hope of entering Jannah is through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please lastly hit the share button which is Akhman al-Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Newcastle Fast FM. And this is the, our third show, inshallah, about women's rights and um, the states of women in Islam and about feminism as well. So, inshallah, um, we're going to kick this off with um, a question and the viewers can also get involved and answer this question as well um describing the status of women in islam so um ikram what's your view on this um assalamu alaikum i think the status of women in islam is very clear it's very clear that we have a high status and for example, the first woman, the first person actually to embrace Islam was Khadija radiallahu anhu, the and her, the wife of the Prophet. She was a great scholar and she and she was a great businesswoman. One of the greatest scholars in Islam was Aisha radiallahu anha. And also the Prophet وسلم, used to preach about the importance of women and condemned ill treatment of women, especially in his last sermon that he delivered before he died. For example, he said, women aren't created weaker, but more generous, we're more beautiful, less fierce. That is why we may seem weak to people, but in reality, we are not. And it was also reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas that if girls are kept alive when they are born rather than being killed and cared for in an equitable manner to their male siblings, the reward was paradise for the parents. So, yeah, I think the status of women in Islam is very, it's very clear and it shows that it is a very high status. Like Motaz Mahmoud just said, yeah, women have a very high status in Islam, definitely. And I would say that although our status isn't exactly like men's status, it's distinct in other ways, but it is also fair. Yes, definitely. I agree with that. We are held to such a high degree in Islam. And um, yeah, um, Ruqayya, what about you? What, how would you describe the status of women in Islam? Sorry, uh, mic issues, but um, yeah, I think that women in Islam, as you both have said, such a high degree, and when um, Islam honors women greatly, and whether it's as a mother or a sibling, or um, an auntie, or whatever it may be, um, like for example, as mothers, you know how um, Islam tells us that a paradise lies at your mother's feet, and the best way to reach paradise is through one's mother, and how you're forbidden from kind of treating women um, with disrespect. Um, 
So I think you're both right, yeah, like we're both, um, women are very important in Islam. Yeah, um, definitely, for sure. And I think you can really see the status of women in Islam in the family structure when Allah talks about and the Prophet talks about the honour that we should give to our mothers and the respect that we should give to our mothers. This isn't given to the father in the exact same way. It's given to the mother in such a high regard. And Allah even mentions in the Quran, Surah Al-Isra, um, verse 23 um, he says that we're not even supposed to say off to them like we're not even supposed to say a mild word of disrespect to our mothers and as um, Rukaya you mentioned the hadith of paradise lying at our mother's feet this is the best way to enter Jannah, is through our mother, through a woman, not through our father, through our mother. So Allah really honours the position of um, women in Islam. Um, as well as that, um, it's mentioned about wives as well, that um, the the Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith, the best of you is the one who is best to his wives, and I am the best of you to my wives. And this is a hadith um, narrated by, by Al Tirmidhi. So again, it's a very it's holding women to such a high regard. Um, even as a wife, we are to be um, treated and respected well. And even as daughters, and every single woman out there is a daughter to someone, the Prophet said that whoever takes care of two girls until they reach adulthood, um, he and I will come like this on the day of resurrection. And he held his two fingers together. And this is um, narrated by Muslim. So obviously we can see here that, um, you know, women are held to such a high degree um, as mothers, as daughters, as wives and these are roles that some women take more than one role as mothers, as daughters, as wives these are roles that we can take um, so yeah, mashallah um, and as we see here, um, Ibtisam has mentioned um, yes, as mothers, wives, daughters, we have been given a higher status in Islam, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, but moving on, um, I'd like to ask you guys and all the listeners as well, is there any women in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the Islamic texts that you look up to as a role model and why? Okay, mine is probably going to be like, people are going to say that it's quite obvious, but mine is Khadija radiallahu and her. And this is because she was a very successful entrepreneur who defined herself as a woman and defined stereotypes of herself and her business because we're talking about over 1,400 years ago and she was she managed to be a successful businesswoman and she was also the first Muslim to accept Islam immediately. She accepted without any question. And to me, that just shows dedication and belief. And she didn't allow her business or her work to compromise her belief in Allah or her religion. She still managed to practice full, full heartedly and fully. So that is why she's one of my role models in Islam because I just think she shows that you can not not have it all, but you can do you can do and you can be successful in this dunya without compromising your religion. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, Khadija, I was going to mention her as well, to be honest. Um, she is someone that I really looked up to, radiallahu anha. Um, and, you know, you've already mentioned it in quite a lot of detail. So I'm going to ask Rukaya, um, who do you look up to as a role model um, in the Quran and the Sunnah? Um, I think one of the most important women as well is like Aisha radiallahu anha. 
like um, she played a major role in politics and like in her time like for example after the death of Uthman she led an army um, and even though she lost like she even went home and she translated hadiths like she's known for narrating 200 no so 2210 hadiths which I think is pretty um impressive so she's like um one of the women also I learned about Nusayba radiallahu anha who's like was known for her courageousness and bravery on the battlefield like for example in the battle of Uhud she was a protector of the prophet um sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as a result she had 12 injuries but as soon as she regained consciousness after fainting her first questions were of the prophet's well-being so like I just think that kind of puts into like perspective how women can be such like um powerful people even during the time of the Prophet, which people don't really acknowledge as much. Yeah, mashallah, um, very good points. Nusayba radiallahu anha, and um, here Aish, um, Ibtisam has mentioned Aisha radiallahu anha. Um, she never had issues with the age gap, had a very strong sound sense of self especially when she went through the scandal and turned out to be a scholar subhanallah and yeah actually the majority of our religion it comes from her the things that we learn about um the hadiths the majority of them out there a lot of them out there are from her and without aisha radiallahu anha we wouldn't understand islam as we understand it today so we owe a lot um to her and princess rashida has mentioned so many alhamdulillah but i really look up to aisha wife of fir'aun and yeah i mean asya sorry <laughs> yeah um, she was she was she was very influential mashallah yeah definitely she was you know she strong strong in defiance against you know um her husband and really she was she was a woman to really aspire to be like so um mashallah those are very good answers jazakallah khair for all the listeners in for contributing to the conversation and inshallah we're going to move on with this conversation and we're going to talk about um the status of women in modern day society i feel like nowadays especially women are looked down upon especially um, those who want to be housewives. Um, but I'm going to ask, um, what what is the status of women in modern day society in the UK? And why does society look down on being a housewife? And is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? Let's have a conversation about that. So Ikram, let me know what you think. Yeah, I think to be honest, the Western world doesn't it's very complicated right now in the status of women in a modern day society. It's complicated in my opinion because right now what we're seeing is that women in the Western world and our society are fighting to be seen and represented in all aspects. Um women are being discriminated against for anything they do, whether they choose to work, whether they don't choose to work, whether they wear the scarf, whether they don't wear the scarf. There's it's about everything women do now is nitpicked. So in the modern day society, in my opinion, and I'm not talking about Islam, I'm talking about in the Western world, women are sort of like degraded in their, in their type of status. But then at the same time, they want to, they, they are empowered. I know that sounds very contradictory, but I feel like because of the treatment of women, they are standing up for themselves and they are speaking out, and that is what's empowering them, in my opinion. But I think that's the beauty of Islam. That the beauty of Islam is that it's already given us that recognition and um, representation that we don't need to actually, in the religion anyway, like fight for our rights because that's something that Islam has already given it to us, given to us. And I think when people start looking at um, when people make comments about Muslim women being oppressed in the religion and they're looking at the people, they're not looking, they're not actually looking at the religion, they're looking at people and cultural practices. And we all know that cultural practices are very, are independent from what the religion says, what Allah has told us to do. Um, in terms of being, staying at home or being a stay at home mom and being, uh, or being a housewife, 
I think that's just the word that's been like like dragged through the mud. Like it's just it's just the descriptive word of describing someone who stays at home. And in my opinion, housewives still do a lot of work because it's not easy um, taking care of an entire house putting food on the table and if you have children that becomes even harder and it is a very rewarding job you get a lot of rewards and has a sustenance from Allah from doing that if you choose to do that so I think because the society wants women to be up there and like in the same sort of eye view as men or in the eye view of the public a lot of this current society looks down on the phrase of being a housewife but if that's what you want to do there's nothing wrong with doing that Yeah, exactly. I 100% agree with what you're saying. I think as well, um, part of it is because we live in such a material world where we really value money um, and we don't value the effort it takes to run a household efficiently and to look after children and all of this other stuff. It's actually a really hard job to do. And um, a lot of people don't really understand that. And therefore, um, they really like knock it down um as a valid like you know as a valid kind of job and um as Ibtisam said it's become taboo now if you want to stay at home or be a mom or a homemaker and I definitely definitely agree with that as well um so yeah um so yeah, Rukaya, what's your opinion on this whole matter? Um, I agree with both of you guys. I think that, especially nowadays, that housewives are like looked down upon in general, just because of the connotations that come with the title. I feel like some people believe it's uh, considered a lesser role, but I think some people don't, as you both said, they don't understand the struggle of managing a household and like doing housework and all that it comes with. Like some people may even consider being a housewife as an occupation because it occupies like a lot of a woman's time, a lot of effort it takes. So I think that there will be less of an issue, perhaps if you like kind of called it a homemaker, maybe kind of the first housewife kind of just implies that only a woman can kind of do this role, but maybe the roles could be reversed in theory but um also kind of I think people kind of associated with like oppression and lack of lack of intellect like you um the only reason that women choose to be um a housewife is because they're not successful enough or they haven't got the right amount of education or whatever it might be to kind of make it in what might be considered the real world in kind of in quote marks so um when in reality like like Ikram said it is completely a choice like whether or not you want to be a housewife and then for some women it might be a sacrifice that they choose to make whether they're giving up kind of like their dream um to kind of like stay at home and decide to support their family um so just that the decision is like entirely their own it should not be associated with like oppression or lack of freedom and like as for Islam, um, should a woman choose to be like a housewife or not, regardless, she's considered her husband's equal. Like it's considered honourable when a woman is a housewife and it's considered an important duty. So it doesn't mean that she's been restricted to a housewife and a housewife only. Definitely, definitely. And Flirting Man just commented, in my eyes, a housewife has one of the most important and hardest roles in society and should be looked at with great respect. And it should be. I'm, I definitely agree with you, Okay, I think society nowadays has like, degraded that title and like almost into an insult but it's not an insult if it's your choice like yeah so um definitely as Ikram was saying it is um it is something that is honorable and it is something that we should look up to even um because the rewards of of looking after your family of raising children and looking after your husband it's a great reward as well um so yeah um women's rights in islam um however or have really has really revolutionized the rights of women 1400 years ago um and yeah so um tell me about that and Tell me what you guys think about women's rights in Islam. Rukaya. Um, 
Um, so like from like the back in the day, nothing's really changed in terms of the actual basic rights within, within Islam, but maybe the application of these principles have changed. Like, um, I don't know, maybe some men nowadays or might not, but like maybe um, kind of, I don't know how to word it, but like, like the rights within Islam have not changed. So whether or not like in, in regard to like um, um, a housewife, like, it's still um, considered like a man's equal regardless of like your occupation. And like, for example, like um, the Prophet Sallallahu said, I urge you to treat women well. So I think that kind of just like sums up exactly what women are considered in Islam, if that makes sense. Yeah. I oh, also, sorry. Oh no, sorry. Um, I also think that Islam did revolutionize the rights of women because um, like I said, like the beauty of Islam was that it gave women their status, respect and prominence over 1,400 years ago. And that's something that Western societies didn't do till the 90s and some of them are still struggling to do. So, and in those days before Islam came, before the Quran was um, revealed, similar to what people are fighting for now, women weren't treated as equal. They were forced into marriage. They didn't receive an education. and that does still happen today in some parts of the world, in some families, in some communities. I think Logan M did say that sometimes it's not always a choice. And it is, he is right that sometimes some women are forced into situations that they don't want to be in. But we should know that that has nothing to do with Islam because under Islam, forced marriages were abolished. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, a woman must not be married until her permission is sought. And when he was asked, how is her consent like solicited? He said, the Prophet وسلم, said that the authority of a guardian cannot be exercised against her will. So a woman can't be married off to someone that she doesn't want to be married off. Her silence isn't consent. She has to say, yes, I want to marry this person. And if you ever attend a Muslim wedding, a nikah, there will be there will be a separate there will be a, a part of the wedding where the woman will be by herself not by herself like people will be watching but the imam will ask her independently of her husband and her guardian do you agree to this marriage and she has to say yes or no so islam gave gave women that right and the quran does say that in surah an nisa it is not lawful for you to inherit a woman by compulsion so islam really did revolutionize the rights of women like for example a woman's money is her money if a woman makes money no one has the right to ask for that money to take that money away from her without her permission and she has no obligation to spend it on other people etc like if she wants to spend it on other people and if she does spend it on her family that's that's a reward for her she gets reward from allah from doing that because it's seen as an extra but she doesn't she doesn't have to be in even like, again, with marriage, women don't change their name when they get married as they do with Western societies because it allows that woman to have that independence and it doesn't symbolize, it, like it's not her bec becoming like her husband's property or her husband, like she's still her, she's still her own person. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of really good points there. Um, I was gonna actually talk about the, um, the right to, to inheritance because this is something that wasn't around 1400 years ago at the time of the prophet and even in the 19th century in the western world it you were allowed women were not allowed to inherit um from their husbands or from their fathers or their mother whatever um all the wealth that they would um be um all the wealth that would technically be their right is actually given to their husband or their father or their brother or whatever. But in Islam, um, actually, um, Said ibn Jubair and Qatada, they said that the idolaters used to give adult men a share of inheritance and deprive women and children of it. And then Allah revealed in the Quran, um, the ayah that translates to for men is a share of what the parents and close relatives leave and for women is a share of what the parents and close relatives leaves be it little or much an obligatory share so as Muslims as well we are um, as Muslim women 
we were given this right to inherit something that's only happened in the 19th century in the Western world, this right was given to us 1400 years ago. And not just that, many other rights, the right to work, um, a woman's property, as you said, Ikram, is her own property. And you know, this whole idea of changing your surname when you get married, this comes from this Western idea that was around in the 19th century, where people used to believe that um, a woman was someone's property and when you married her, you own her and therefore she has to take your surname because she now belongs to you. And this is obviously not the case in Islam. In Islam, we are encouraged to keep our own surnames. And this is what the wives of the Prophet did. Khadija was not known as Khadija um, bint um, Muhammad or Khadija bint Abdullah or Abdul Mutalib. She was known as Khadija bint Khuwailid because that was her father and she was not owned by the prophet when she um, came to marry him. So um, yeah, this is um, something that I just wanted to mention as well on top of what we've already said. Um, but now let's talk a little bit about, obviously in Islam, we believe more in this idea of gender justice rather than gender equality because equality is not always justice, equality is not always fair, it's not always equity. So um, let's talk about that first. What is the difference between equality and justice or equality and equity? And what does Islam teach about this, um, Ikram? So um, gender justice to me is the, redist is the redistribution of power and opportunities. So it's like an active way of putting people who have been maybe traditionally like put put on the back in positions of power to make them to catch them up basically to make them a bit more equal so for example like especially now you're seeing a lot of BAME opportunities opportunities for people who come from a minority group or you're seeing women being prioritized for job roles etc whereas gender equality is equalizing men and women in almost all aspects or as many aspects as possible and I think gender justice is needed it's definitely needed because you can't achieve gender equality without gender justice and like you said um Islam is more focused on gender justice which is not making us basically it's not making us equal because at the end of the day men and women are not equal and when I say they're not equal I mean they're not the same psychologically and physiologically our hormones are different. This is why we compete in separate categories of sports because men have more testosterone than women. So I don't, so that's why I think gender justice is better than gender equality because I agree with things such as equal pay because someone shouldn't be paid less for doing the same amount of work than a different gender is doing. But I don't think we need equality in all in all aspects and when I say we don't need equality I mean like Islam has already outlined and shown us what we do and what is meant to happen in all categories of life yeah definitely um Rukaya, what's your um views on this Yeah, I think Ikram summed it up really well. Like, um, as for the whole sports thing, yeah, I don't think that, like, when men and women should be competing in the same categories. There is a reason why, you know, like, for example, women's football is different and so is men's and stuff like that. But as for, like, in quality, then it is definitely, like, necessary, but in terms of, like, equal pay for women who are um, in, like, professional roles and stuff like that, like, of course, they should be paid the same amount as men who are in the same profession. But, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we have a comment here from Razi A that says gender equality is necessary, definitely. But what is the but what the West is aiming at is denying binary gender. You can't deny biology, emotional IQ. But the West says deny that, become a man. It's really sad. And I definitely agree with that. I think um, a lot of the times now, um, the West is kind of making a competition out of this being a 
out of doing things um so for example they'd be like oh women can do the same thing that a man can do like we can do it as well just as well or we could do it better but that's not why we're created this way we've been created this way not to compete with one another we've been created differently because Allah has created us to complete each other as men and women we are supposed to complete each other and the the roles that we have are complementary they're not we're not supposed to compete with each other and um you know you know have this kind of this whole um feminism movement that is modern day feminism i'm not saying traditional feminism but modern day feminism now is all about this competition that's really um that's really um that's really bad for the society as a whole and it doesn't take into account the biological and the um the biological differences and the psychological differences that ikram mentioned and as princess rashida has mentioned we are equal but not identical and i definitely agree with that um and Ibtisam has mentioned here, good point, we've been created differently to complete each other, well said. Jazakallah khair. So yeah, we have been created differently for a reason. And um, this is why Allah has given us different responsibilities as well. A man is obligated to look after the women in his household. If my father was to pass away, my brother becomes obligated to look after me and to make sure that I'm well fed well dressed and all of that other stuff so you know um and that isn't an obligation that is an obligation upon him but women don't have that same obligation which is why for example the laws of inheritance are slightly different between men and women because women don't have this responsibility that men have so yeah um, let's move on though and talk a little bit more about modern day feminism. What does it stand for and do we need it as Muslims? Ikram. So I honestly think us Muslims, we don't need feminism at all because Islam has already given us and stated our rights and a lot of what modern fem fem uh, feminism stands for goes against Islam and just isn't necessary because a woman, like you said, Rueda, has her specific duties that have been postponed upon her by God. And a man has his specific duties that they have to do. And it isn't to make things unequal, it's to not overburden each of the genders because women, um, I think it was Login M that said it, that women said, he said, she, he or she said that we are different physically and emotionally. We are, women, are different to men we're made differently we are below men but we're just not the same and they're not equal to us either and islam has ensured the equality in the things that matter so like religion and fasting in sort of tolba ayah 71 it says the men believers and the women believers um are responsible for each other and they should continue to help each other in prayer and um, worshiping Allah so we're equal in that because we all we're all Muslim we all have to pray we all have to fast we all have to worship Allah but there are aspects men have that females don't have or may struggle to have and vice versa and Islam has remained sensitive to those differences and those issues so for example in Ramadan everyone is obligated to fast in Ramadan except the ill people who are ill children and women who are menstruating and that's because when we are, we're going through physical changes that aren't, that fasting wouldn't be beneficial for us during that time. So that's, so that just, that just highlights that we aren't equal to men because according to modern day feminism, if we were equal, we would have to also fast all the time, even when we weren't menstruating. But we see that in Islam, there's a knowledge, there's a hikmah, like Allah has literally perfected the religion through things such as this. He's made he's made us fair he's made he's put equity in the religion so it's it's fair and it's enough for us because it takes into account um our differences and what and what we go through 
so I honestly I don't think we need we need feminism at all and Prince Noor actually says that Islam already gave the rights for women and men accordingly so we don't need this feminist ideology of the west and I think that's very important because the religion has already given that to us so now it's up to the people to maintain what the religion has given Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree with what you said. Um, what about you, Rukaya? Um, What would you like to add to this? Modern day fem feminism, do we need it? What does it stand for? Well, I really don't know what else I can add apart from what Ikram said, mashallah. I think she summarised it really, really well. Like, I don't think we need it either. Like, I think Islam raised the status of women and, and made them equal with men in like a lot of rulings. So like women... Like men are commanded to believe in Allah, to worship him, and women are made equal to men in terms of the reward in the hereafter as well. So women have the right to express themselves, to give sincere advice, to um, enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil, and to call people to Allah, just like men have that same responsibility Islamically. So I think in terms of feminism, we don't really need it, no, but when you put it in respect to like professions, stuff like that, when it comes to um, people wanting equal pay, of course you should um, want that you know um that would also put men and women equal but in terms of like islamically i think when you look into the deen enough to understand what the quran says and the hadith of the prophet وسلم, you know like everything that you need to in regards to like men and women's rights and the responsibilities that both genders have exactly definitely and the thing is as well islam is a very um it's it's a very complete religion it covers every single aspect of our lives um even down to like what we should do when we sneeze and even up to the stages of how society should be how the family structure should be allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have already given us guidelines on how to live our lives in every single aspect so we don't need feminism or anything to teach us um what we what rights we deserve as muslims because allah is Al Hakim, he is the most knowledgeable and he knows exactly what each of us are capable of and he knows what each of us can handle as a burden. And he has given us what just what we can handle. So the reason why there is differences in the um in the roles and responsibilities of men and women in Islam is because of this um hikmah that Allah has that he knows exactly what the difference is between us and what exactly what we need to do and what we are capable of doing as Muslims um so yeah jazakallah khair everyone for listening and um I would like to um say jazakallah khair to everyone for listening and um yeah thank you for all the comments and inshallah we'll see you all next week um assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh